So uh, DC fast charging won't catch on. Um, so I, I can tell you right now that if we look at the stats on Nissan LEAF, and we can go to, to one primary statistic about this, on the model year 11 vehicle, um, we had two options, an SV and an SL. On the SL trim, you could get the DC fast charging port, uh, which you can see this is hooked up to a DC fast charger. You get that port, but it came at a cost in, in, uh, on the SL. Well, first off, I should tell you that the SL trim was already 95% of the mix. So our first consumers overwhelmingly picked that. Secondly, they picked, at nine out of 10 times, they picked the DC fast charger port because uh, they wanted that capability on the vehicle. As a result, on the model year 12 vehicle, it's standard on the SL trim. It's why, why make it an option when everybody wants it? So the consumers have already made their decision on this. If they want a Nissan LEAF, they want us to make DC fast charging uh, uh, an option. And I can tell you today, I have visibility to 562 chargers uh, that are independently being installed throughout the United States, and it's just the, the process is, is starting to begin its rapid growth. Um, what are the differences, Brendan, between the DC fast charging standard package that you offered before in terms of uh, charging? So if you talk about the different levels of charging, you actually have three. So you have a 110 cord set, which is equivalent to your spare tire. You're going to use that when you've run out of options, uh, and that'll plug into any 110 outlet as long as it has a dedicated amperage on it, uh, and you can charge up the vehicle. It's the charge time that becomes an issue then. It's about 18 hours on a 110 cord set. So then L2, that is a 240 charge. So the equivalent to what your dryer or your air conditioning uh, unit runs off of. So that's an easy install in most homes where you can mount that on the wall. They're even coming out with some portable cord sets on that now if you don't want a wall mounted. Uh, there are, some counties are allowing for it to be plugged in, but that's not a universal standard yet. And that charges anywhere depending on where you are. And keep in mind that when we say these numbers, it's from from E. What we're finding out is nobody's empty. Nobody's at a depleted state of charge. So it's eight hours typically on an L2 from zero. If you go to DC fast charge, DC fast charge is a different concept. It's DC, not AC. So the speed of charge is direct current into the battery. Uh, so that's a little different than AC where it goes through a converter. Uh, and it comes into the car. You can fully charge the vehicle up to 80 plus percent in under 30 minutes. When I say under 30 minutes, if you use DC fast charging once a day, it'll actually charge faster. If you don't, because it raises the core temperature of the battery to accept the charge, charge at a faster rate. So every day you're gonna get quicker. I took a vehicle in Japan and it charged much quicker, but it was a daily user of DC fast charging. So that be, we don't publish those stats for the very reason that it becomes unusability. The best way to say it is on average, for most Americans, is you'll get to 80% in well under 30 minutes. Uh, for DC fast charging. Much quicker, convenient. So to top off, you go into the gas station, using that as an analogy, uh, and you can get a top off in five. You can get 30 miles in uh, five minutes, 50 miles in 15 minutes, and then top off to the top in under 30. Uh, so that's the way to think about DC fast charging. It's equivalent to a gas station. What's so, that, the 380? It's 480. 480. Yeah, 440 to 480, it's three phase power. What does it do to battery life? Uh, it does have a minor uh, impact within the warranty, so it's still covered under the warranty, but in terms of diminished capacity, it's, it's fractional, uh, but it is there. You, you're going to get more because of the current. What's the cost of it? On DC fast chargers? To be announced. There's some commercial uh, DC fast chargers out there on the market today. I can, you can go out there and, and research and look up the price points. Uh, Nissan will have an announcement on a Nissan DC fast charger uh, later uh, this month, if not uh, quicker than that. Uh, so in, in good things to come on that topic. Uh, I wasn't clear. What, what are the warranty implications? There's no warranty implications, zero. What, what about battery life? Is uh, battery there's, life reduced? Yeah, in terms of battery life, there's no implications. It d does DC, the, the, your question, if I understood it right, does using DC fast charge diminished capacity on the vehicle. If you abuse it, yes. So <clears throat> say you did 10, say, which you think about that, you wouldn't need that amount of range. But if you, 10, over, 10 DC fast chargers in a day. <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're fast charging once uh, a day, every day, every day. Um, no issue. No issue. Longer. Yeah. So. Uh, century EPA requires an eight year warranty on the battery. EPA doesn't require it on this technology for a Nissan LEAF, but we put it on there. 
So the, the warranty that EPA required on uh, Prius uh, when it first came out is different than the requirement for the Nissan LEAF, but we matched the warranty on Nissan. Our, the, the warranty were, were standard that uh, we could have put on it is five years 60, but we matched the industry because the, uh, the plugins, uh, I mean the hybrids already uh, standardized the eight year warranty, so we followed suit. But we were not required to do that, but we believe in the battery that much. Uh, we don't have a published cost on replacing the battery. The primary reason, if you look at diagnostics on the battery, primarily what they do is replace a cell. I don't know if anybody's had a chance to look on it, but if you open up the battery, it looks like a whole bunch of notebook computers, not, not laptop batteries to be confused with another product, but it looks, it, it looks like a whole bunch of notebook computers, 64 of them. Within them, there's, there's four cells. So the diagnostic will, will replace the cell replace the, the, the pack as opposed to the whole battery. And it's really neat is the consult tool will be able to diagnose instantaneously. I've seen it done, and the speed at which a technician can do it, they put the table underneath, they take the six bolts off, it drops down, they plug in the tool, it tells them which pack to go to, they replace the pack, they put the battery back up that quick, and it's done. So, and that's the, the, the test. So we haven't had, uh, we've had great results with the battery thus far on the vehicle, uh, and we're very pleased. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. When you replace a worn out cell with a fresh cell, does that put additional strain on the remaining cells that are not as fresh as the new ones? Will their, will their default rate, will their fault rate rather, be higher because you just put a brand new cell? Uh, it, it's a real technical question. I don't have an answer. My understanding is no. Uh, that it has an even distribution, so it doesn't overtax, is the way I'd look at that, uh, the existing cells within the pack. First, there's four cells in a pack, so all those would be brand new if you replaced a module. So you place one module, you get four new cells. So the question you're asking is, does the module, my understanding is, yeah, yeah, my, my understanding is no. Uh, but that's a good follow-up question. We'll confirm with the tech folks to, to follow back up on. In the uh, great cafe game, uh, what is this, how are you rated on miles per gallon? What does it do for your fleet average? It has to do a great deal. It does a great deal. Uh, the EPA r r rating on it when they, when they look at it, and the EPA has a different rating than the 100 mile range, as you guys know. So they give us a 73 on that, equivalent to a gas engine. 73. So, 73. So th that. What, 73 miles per charge, but I think you're Per right. charge. They, they do a miles per gallon yeah, equivalent. Per, yeah. 99. 99 on gallon. the miles per gallon equivalent, yes. So, yeah, that, that, it's great benefit in that. Is this going to be sale and it's currently available both sale and lease. Mm -hmm. Lease pen is about uh, 16 to 18% nationally right now. We expect an increase on that as we get to the Northeast markets in a more robust manner. Any questions on that topic before I go to the next one? And the last one, I, I believe, is well, this one's one of my favorite. Uh, so this is real. This wasn't DC last winter. Uh, so, because we didn't have a leaf there at this time. This is Fairbanks, uh, Alaska, and this is a test. So we put the vehicle through all sorts of cycle testing up there in cold weather. I can say with assurance it performed great. Uh, and on top of that, the Model Year 12 vehicle is now available with standard cold weather features on it uh, to improve the battery technology and performance and also uh, in the interior. Uh, the vehicle has uh, comfort and convenience ads such as heated seats heated steering wheel, which all can be turned on before you get in the vehicle via remote. So if you're sitting up in your bedroom on a cold winter day and you get up and you've already pre-chromed your iPhone to turn on the heating system, when you get in the car, it's going to be nice and toasty uh, for you, all off the home power and not off the vehicle. It's a one-off. Uh, Leaf is not a one-off product for Nissan North America. Uh, we are fully invested in uh, electric vehicles, and we continue to roll out projects, products. I can tell you right now, the Infiniti uh, is coming. Uh, it's going to be a great car. We'll have more details on that. Uh, we're also uh, investing in a commercial vehicle, which is off the NV2000, which is the vehicle selected uh, for the new uh, New York taxi of tomorrow, which will begin uh, rolling out in New York City uh, for actual usage in 2013. Uh, we will be having an announcement on that platform on a elect, small electric com, uh, commercial vehicle or van 
uh, and there's other products behind that. So Nissan, and with our alliance partners, is fully vested in producing electric vehicle for today and for the future. Uh, there'll be more products to come, more announcements, and more good things. And what is my last one is thank you, and we got the polar bear there. And then we're open for questions, and you guys have been great, so I'll throw it back out to the floor. We're on plan for uh, Nissan LEAF in terms of what our overall profit projections are in the life cycle of the vehicle. Uh, so beyond that, I'm not going to get into the details. Of, uh, What's the time horizon on when you might expect to generate positive ROI? We're, we're on plan. So it will happen on, uh, in this model year for this vehicle. I mean, in this model for this vehicle. So it has a very uh, good profit picture long term. Gee, I, I, I wish I could project that, but I don't have the exact number on there. Yeah. If I could, I'd answer the question, but the frank answer is I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I could have a response to that, but I'll stay away from it entirely. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's excellent question because it's it, it's asked. So w there's a second phase that we're working on. Uh, particularly, you know, it's easy to do EVSEs as you all know in in home. You have a garage. You even have just a driveway. You can post a, an EVSC because they're all weather. Uh, so you can put one just anywhere if you have a home. It's very easy to do as long as you have the power. So garages, we're working with them, uh, especially if you look at town home communities. We've done a couple tests thus far of actually putting them in apartments where the, the complex was owned and we got permission from the owner. Uh, so the, but the better news on that is, opposed to Nissan, the EVC providers are really doing the work here. So Aero Environment, 350 Green, all of those individuals that are responsible for getting infrastructure out and our partners with utilities such as NRG, uh, Duke, et cetera, they're really diving into this, the, the, this topic uh, hard and fast because they want to bring uh, the ability to charge those vehicles to their consumers as well. So they are working with, with the townhouse communities, the condo communities. Uh, we're working in partnership with a lot of the garages throughout the country. In New York City, we're working on a plan where you, to, to wire the garages for EVSC charging. In concept, it's easy. It's just breaking through to get to that level. Uh, but if you look at a typical garage today, say it's in New York City, and to put uh, EVCs, and you all seen the, a the aero environment head, it's relatively simple to do. So you're just laying conduit along a cement wall and putting the head on, and the conduit attaches to a 220, which is in every garage today, uh, and you can do it. So we're at that point now. We're ready to get that out there, and we have garages today that are already proof points of that who've disseminated the infrastructure. We just need to expand that out. Uh, and New York is just beginning. Uh, but they're doing that in San Francisco. They're doing that in Los Angeles. They've done it in San Diego. Uh, and there's other environments that are doing that. They'll be doing it in Chicago. So it's the next step. Uh, and it's the next logical step because you're going to find other people that want this technology. But their particular charging needs, uh, they're, they're not met by doing an in-home installation. They need it in the driveway or a, s a select s section in the townhome community. Seem to increase the range versus um, 